Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back. In today's video, I am going to be tier ranking all of my winter reads. That's right, I'm going to be talking about the best books and the worst books, my favorites and my least favorites, the books I DNF'd, the books that were just kind of meh, everything I read in winter. I think over that span of time, I read 30 plus books. So let's get into it. I got a lot of books to cover. I just have my Canva pulled up. So I'm going to minimize myself, show you my screen, and uh, let's tier rank these bad boys. So I have five uh, tiers here. This is not like a one through five tier system. There may be some variation. Um, I have already rated all of these books over on my Goodreads or Storygraph, so but I feel like the one through five system, just like one, two, three, four, five without adding in those half stars, it's really, really hard to accurately categorize like how much I loved or how I really felt about a book using just that one through five system. So I actually really like this. I very rarely rate books one star, so these I feel like more accurately represent how I typically like feel about a book in my mind. <laughs> Starting top tier is perfection. These are books that um, are absolute perfection. These are five star books that I can't think of one thing that I would change. They are favorites of all time, books that live in my mind rent free forever. And I just love and want to shout from the rooftops about. Um, so these are just like my absolute perfect books. Um, next up I have Pretty Freaking Great. Uh, these are also books I absolutely love, but maybe there's one or two things that I might change. Usually they're, they're not too bothersome. They're still pretty freaking great in my eyes and I really, really love them, but not absolute perfection. Then I have It Was Okay, might recommend. These are typically somewhere in the three star range, sometimes maybe 2.5, um, but there are books that were just okay. They were fine. I would probably recommend them to a more niche audience. I wouldn't recommend them widely to everyone like I would Perfection or Pretty Freaking Great. And next up I have What, Why, How. <laughs> and basically these are the books that just leave me questioning, like, what, what is this book? What, what was it for? Why was it made? Uh, how did it get made? Why is it here? Why did I read this? Why did I finish this? Uh, that's usually these books. Those are typically the books that I put in the two star range, um, sometimes one stars, um, but they are books that I completed. And at the end of it was like, what the hell was this? <laughs> Why? Why was this made? Um, and then last, I have DNF'd. These are books that I did not finish. These are actually books that I think probably would have made it into It Was Okay, Might Recommend, or What, Why, How. But typically, I DNF a book when I think it's not going to get over three stars, and I just can't be bothered to actually finish it and see. It's books that I'm pretty confident will not be pretty freaking great and definitely won't be perfection. And I just don't wanna waste my time completing. There are books that I feel like will be a low three star. And um, there's usually something with them that while not bad and other people will probably really enjoy, um, it's just not working for me. It could be a timing thing. It could be a specific tropes that are used that I don't like or a writing style. So DNFs are not like one star or terrible reads. They're just books that I didn't finish that I put down for whatever reason. And I typically have a few of those and I don't rate those. So I needed to have a category for those. Okay, so I'm gonna just start pulling my books out of my list here. I've already uploaded all of the covers. So this is everything that I read over December, January, February, and the first week of March when I was completing some February TBR books that I hadn't finished. So um, here we go. These are in no particular order. Um, they're not even grouped by month. They're just kind of whatever, <laughs> however they got put in there. So Jar of Hearts by Jennifer Hillier. I loved this book. I gave it 4.5 stars. Um, so not perfection, but it was pretty freaking great. It was pretty freaking great. I'm really becoming quite the fan of Jennifer Hillier. I've only read one other book from her, but this book really reminded me that I need to read more. 
Um, I just really enjoy her pacing and her books get quite dark. She writes very dark thrillers. We do have a detective POV, which I typically don't care for. But in this book, I really loved every single POV. I was absolutely on edge and riveted the whole entire time. Very dark story, um, some pretty good twists, uh, some jaw dropping moments. I just, I really loved how this was told. Um, I do think the ending was Mm, a little bit rocky for me. I do wish there were a little bit of changes here and there, which is why I didn't get a full five star for me. But I think I did. I may have rounded up to five on Goodreads. I'm not quite sure. I don't remember. But it's a solid 4.5 for me. I definitely want to pick up more from Jennifer Hillier. This was a really, really great one. I read that in February for Coral's um, readathon that she had going on over Valentine's Day week. I think Leah my Bloody Valentine readathon. I read that for um, Black Author and Body Part in the title. I think those were the, the two prompts that I read it for. Next up, I have It Sees You When You're Sleeping by Gemma Amore. I read this over Christmas. Um, this is just like a, a quick horror Christmas novella. You can tell by the cover. The cover is really cool. Um, I've read two other books from Gemma Amore in the past, and I think I gave them both two or 2.5 stars. So I kind of took a chance on this one. I just saw it going around on Goodreads, and I was like, eh, it's short. I'll pick it up. I'll give her a third chance. Um, I didn't love it. But it is my favorite that I've read of hers so far. So that's something. I still don't think I will be reading any more from her. I just don't think her writing style works for me for some reason. I just always get nitpicky about her stories and find things that don't make sense to me. And just, I just find stuff that irritates me. So I don't know. I think it's a it's a me issue because I know a lot of other people really love her work. And this was a fun story, um, like a creature sort of thing you can see from the cover here. Um, it looks kind of like a spider, but I think it was more of like a, a praying mantis sort of creature that comes down the chimney. It was a fun story, like in theory, but I just didn't care for the way that it was written. And there were things that kept happening that I was like, wait, what? That doesn't make sense. So... Um, I'll put it in. It was okay. My recommend. I would say if you really like her work, you'll probably like this one too. If you like creature features, you probably like this one. Next up I have, I found Christmas Lights Slithering at My Street by Ben Farthing. I had read one thing previous from this author that I really enjoyed. It was like that tent. It's a really long title. I don't remember what it is, but it was about like a circus tent. Um, and I really liked that one, but this one didn't work for me, which was really a bummer because I heard that it was super weird and it was, I got far enough in it to see the weird. The weird happens very, very fast. We're following these two young boys. Um, we know this one boy, um, I think they're like around 12 or so. This one boy, um, something traumatic happened the Christmas before and his parents aren't into celebrating Christmas that year. So um, he's really bummed about that. And um, he comes across these Christmas lights in like a sewer grate, pulls them out. And then that just sets off this like wild, wild time. I ended up DNFing this book. It just, I feel like it got too weird too fast. And I didn't have anything to like root me in the story or keep me interested. It just made my head spin. And not in a way that I enjoyed. Um, I feel like if there would have been a little bit more buildup and I would have had like characters to attach to, um, maybe I would have pushed myself through this, but for whatever reason, I just, I couldn't get invested. I tried it two separate times throughout December and both times I DNF'd. So I just, I called it on that second one. So it's going in the DNF list. Next up, I have Candy Cane Kills by Brian McCauley. I really enjoyed this one. I don't remember my rating for it, but I think I'm going to put it in pretty freaking great. I know I rated it highly. Um, I don't remember a whole lot of it now. I know that it was like, I know when I was rating it, it was giving me like Bloody Mary vibes. It felt very, not folk horror. Well, maybe it, it was kind of like, 
felt like legends, like there was this legend of something that happened at this particular place. And then it's Christmas and something happens that kind of coincides with that. But I really enjoyed it. I think it was super, super fun and was the most enjoyable Christmas horror novella that I read throughout the season. Um, I just really like Brian McCauley's writing. I think he writes characters really well. He writes really good kills and just like really fun stories. So I think I rated it pretty highly. I don't remember if I gave it a four or a five or somewhere in between, but I'm going to put it in pretty freaking great. If I don't remember it 100%, I'm not going to say it was perfection, um, but it's pretty freaking great. Miss Laid in Parts Half Known by Shannon McGuire. This is book nine in the Wayward Children series, so I'm not going to say too much about it. Um, this is one of the books in the series that cannot be read as a standalone. You do have to read this in a linear fashion with the other books. Um, but we revisit a lot of characters in this one that I have loved, loved, loved in the past. Some of my favorite, favorite characters um, are in this one, which really made this so, so enjoyable. Um, I will say that the cover looks like it's going to be big dinosaur vibes, and that really wasn't the case. Um, there is like a dinosaur world in this, but I feel like it played like a very small part of the book to have this whole cover. Um, so I was a little bit disappointed. So not a full five star for me. I think when I first finish it, I was like, yes, one of my favorites. And it, I would still stand by that. It is one of my favorites in the series, but I have since changed it from a five star to a 4.5 just because I was a little bit disappointed. I was expecting more dinosaur vibes and that just wasn't, wasn't there. It was very, very small part, um, but it was still a great story. Again, um, some of my favorite characters. And if you enjoy the Wayward Children series, you will probably enjoy this one as well. Um, I'm going to put it in pretty freaking great because that was pretty freaking great. I really love a lot of the Waver Children series books, but it's definitely in like amongst my favorites, like my top five. Throughout winter, I also got to another Ice Planet Barbarians book. I read Barbarians Touch, which was book seven, I want to say. Seven, I think, um, in the series. So again, I'm not going to say too much about it. If you're unfamiliar with the series, um, the book, the series starts with a group of women who are abducted from Earth. Um, they're flying on a spaceship through space. The spaceship crash lands on this ice planet and they are kind of rescued by these creatures that are living on the ice planet that have made a home there and they show them how to adapt and survive on the planet. And a lot of them happen to fall in love and those sorts of things. It's a very smutty romance series. Um, I wouldn't say like the sci-fi elements are super like heavy. And if you like, you're a big sci-fi reader, you'll probably find flaws within the world building and stuff. You definitely have to read quite a few books in order to like have them build upon each other. Um, but I really love the series for the characters. They are very like tropey, but it's a cozy series for me. I know what to expect when I read the books. Um, they're just a smutty good time. So if you like smutty monster romance, you'll probably like these. And this one in particular was one of my favorites from the series. I don't think I've rated anything from the series less than three stars. Um, but I haven't rated too many of them five stars. This one got a five star for me. I just thought a lot of interesting stuff happened in this one. Um, the main characters were really interesting. The female in this one had uh, is deaf, so hearing disability. She has like a hearing aid or needs a hearing aid. And I just thought the way that that disability rep was handled throughout the book was really, really great. And the relationship between the two characters as we're watching their relationship evolve, um, I, I really liked their dynamic. It was very sweet. Um, some of the books have a little bit more of like a, a darker edge to them, but this one I thought was very, very sweet, very my style of romance. And I just thought it was super cute and super fun. So I don't really know. <laughs> what I want to what I want to put this in do I want to put it in perfection I feel like vibes wise is perfection I had the best time reading this um or listening to the audio but you know it's not it's not like perfectly written I don't feel like everything is explained perfectly like it's not going to be perfect for everyone but 
I don't know, for me and out of the books that I've read in the series, I just, I really, really loved this one. So what the hell? I'm going to put it in perfection. Perfection's looking lonely and blank there. So <laughs> I'm just going to put it in perfection. I love this freaking series. I don't care what anyone says. Ice Planet Barbarians, it's my jam. The Broken Places by Blaine Daigle. This was my book club book for January. Um, I did enjoy this one. It was not a perfect book by any means. I did have a lot of complaints about it while reading it. Um, there were some problem areas and some choices made that I wish weren't there. But for the most part, I thought the atmosphere was done really well. I loved the setting. I did like the direction that it ended up going, but um, I was very scared for what direction that it was going to go in. And by scared, I don't mean like it was actually scaring me in a good way. Um, it was, it was, making me nervous that I was going to do something not good. Um, but it didn't end up doing that. And I ended up liking the direction that it went. But um, my enjoyment throughout was up and down. And yeah, so I ended up giving it a 3.5. I'm going to put it in. It was okay. My recommend. I will definitely read more from this author. And he has another book coming out this summer that's like a ocean horror type thing, which I'm very excited for. Um, I think potentially I could really love something that he puts out because I did really like his writing style. Just as long as he like leaves out the questionable content. Um, even though I don't want to say that that was in it because it doesn't actually end up going to those places. But I think if you read the book, you know where like the fear is of where it could possibly go. Um, and that just like really disturbed my reading experience throughout. So I hope he stays away from that in the future. Next up in February, I read Bluebeard's Castle by Anna Biller. This is a filmmaker's first debut novel, I believe. Um, it's her debut novel. I watched the movie, The Love Witch of Hers, um, a couple months ago. Really loved it. Very, very fun. Aesthetically, it was just such a joy to watch. Um, she definitely has a particular aesthetic and artistic style, and I feel like that's shown through in her book. We're following a woman who is in a toxic relationship with this guy, and it reads very much like a dark romance, gothic romance sort of deal, um, you know, slight horror elements because it's a gothic novel, but mostly it read like dark romance to me and these um, following this woman in this toxic relationship and how she moves through that experience. Um, I've had similar experiences and watched people go through similar experiences in my life. So I feel like um, I could appreciate the representation, although I know there's disagreement with that. I know a lot of people feel like the representation was done really poorly. Um, I personally don't think that. But, you know, everyone's experience, everyone's perception of that is going to be different and totally valid. Um, just from my personal experience, what I've saw and from what I've experienced, how I've felt and seeing other people close to me feel and react and respond and move through these types of situations. Um, I thought it was represented well enough and... I did overall enjoy the book. I ended up giving it a 3.5. I do think um, there were areas where I would have changed things personally, but again, for the most part, for a debut novel, I thought it was really, really good. And if you like gothic romance and dark romance, toxic relationships, that sort of representation, you might want to give this one a go. I do think it's a, you know, it's a gothic novel, so it's a bit more slower paced. It's not super action heavy. It's very character focused. We're in the mind of this main character the whole time. And that can, at least for me, it felt kind of tedious. And, um, you know, I just I wanted, I wanted so much for the main character and just like her actions and responses to things. Not the healthiest, but, you know, that's what happens in toxic relationships and manipulation. And a lot of times when people get caught up in these things, they're not going to bounce out at the first sign of trouble. So anyway, I really liked the book. Um, where do I want to put it? Um, I don't know how widely I would recommend this book just based on, I don't know, the, the group that I read it with, I think for the most part, 
they really didn't enjoy this and the ratings on it are pretty low so I probably wouldn't recommend this too highly but just out of my overall enjoyment I don't know I feel like it's somewhere in between pretty freaking great I don't know it made me feel a lot of things it made me feel a lot of things so even though it wasn't perfect and again I probably won't recommend it very widely I kind of want to put it in pretty freaking great so yeah I'm gonna put it there I'm gonna put it there um next up bridge by Lauren Bukes I DNF'd this one so that's where it's going <laughs> Um, I was, I was really hopeful for this one. I don't read a lot of sci-fi thrillers, but I'm trying to figure out what I like in sci-fi. So I've been starting to pick up more of those. I kind of know what I like in sci-fi horror, but not in like sci-fi thrillers or just like straight sci-fi. This one involves, um, like dimensions and different realities and that kind of stuff which the concept just absolutely intrigues me however the way that this was written I just found it not super compelling there was just something about it that I found confusing and not fun to read about and yeah I just I didn't love it so I, I didn't want to push through it I found myself really just uninterested um, around like the 30-ish percent mark. So I DNF'd it. Um, Yuletide Invasion, back with the Christmas books. This was a, um, a shorter novella, Christmas novella about aliens that attack on Christmas Eve. I believe it's Christmas Eve. Um, there's like these two stores right next to each other, which you can see pictured on the cover. One is like a quickie mart and the other one is a diner. There's two groups of people and aliens are attacking. I didn't like this one. I gave it two stars, maybe 2.5. I can't remember. It just didn't work for me. I didn't care about the characters. Um, I didn't really care about what, what was happening at the ending. I was like, what? That's the way this is ending. This just wasn't my, it wasn't for me. It wasn't my cup of tea. Um, so yeah, I'm going to put it in what why how I wish I would have DNF'd it um but it was so short I was like you know what maybe maybe it's gonna have a killer ending no I didn't like the ending Dead of Winter by Darcy Coates this was the last book that I read in December I read it over the new year I think I started it around like December 30th 31st and finished it around the first um I really really love this book um I know I read it for Kitty's Book Club and I know not everyone felt the same I think um, most everyone thought it was like predictable and very mediocre, which fair. Um, it was very predictable. I did predict everything that ended up unraveling throughout the story. Um, so not wrong in that aspect. But for me, I really enjoyed Darcy Coates's writing for the most part. Um, every time, with the exception of one book that I've picked up a book of hers, I just really get invested very quickly into her characters and her storylines. And even though I found this very predictable it still had me second guessing myself all the way through um so like yes I ended up being right for things but I was constantly like am I right maybe it's not maybe I'm not right maybe it's this person maybe it's this person it was very much like a murder mystery sort of situation a couple goes on this like retreat sort of thing into some snowy mountains they get stuck out there people start dying off her husband or boyfriend disappears and then it's like you know a whodunit sort of mystery situation who's going to survive it does have some slight horror elements to it I didn't think it was super horror but it does have like there's this like tree situation that was quite horror-esque um if you've read it you know what I'm talking about but so um so it did have its like horror elements probably more gore in this one than books that I've read of hers in the past but um yeah I really really enjoyed this one I gave it five stars I guess it's not perfect because you know it is predictable but I thought it was predictable in like the most fun sort of way I don't mind predictable thrillers if I still have a good time guessing along the way and like you know, second guessing myself and fun time with the characters and whatever. I don't know. For whatever reason, this book worked so well for me. It was just hit the spot exactly what I needed at that time. And I gave it five stars. Even though I gave it five stars, I'm not going to put it in perfection because again, I do think it's very predictable. And most people, when they read a mystery thriller, um, including myself, I like to be caught off guard. I typically do like there to be twists and turns and my jaw to drop. 
um, for the reveals and stuff, which this did not have. But again, like the, the reveals when I was right, I made me excited. I was excited that I got it right. So I don't know. I'm just going to put it in pretty freaking great because I thought it was pretty freaking great. Um, so next up, I have Mosaic by Catherine McCarthy. I read this for Katrina's book club in February, I want to say. Um, I co-hosted the live discussion for that. I will link that down below if you want to check it out. It is spoiler filled, but if you want to see what we thought of it, you can go watch that if you want. And in this, we're following a woman who is uh, very talented at restoring stained glass windows. And she is hired to restore a stained glass window in this old abandoned church. And there are some weird elements to the stained glass and to the property and uh, to the people surrounding it. I ended up giving this one three or 3.5. I did have quite a few issues with the story. I did like it overall. Um, I liked the direction that it went and I did like some of like the, the plot elements, but definitely wasn't perfect. I had some issues with the writing style. I'm um, just some of like the, you know, artistic choices that the author made. I just would have liked certain things like focused on less and other things focused on more throughout the story for what I wanted, you know? Um, so I'm gonna put it in, it was okay, might recommend. I'm not mad at it and I would read more from this author. Um, I liked the overall concept of it and everything. Um, Riley Sager, the only one left. I picked this one up. I don't remember what month, um, but it was in 2024, I'm pretty sure. I was going to read this for a vlog. I ended up canceling the vlog very quickly because I was not having a good time. I ended up DNFing this one, so that's where this one's going to go. I just don't think me and Riley Sager, his writing style or the kind of books that he produces just work for me. I know he works for a lot of other people. If you're a thriller reader, I know he's like one of the top guys to read from. But this was my third book that I've tried from him and it just wasn't my style of book. This was actually out of the three books that I've read from him, this was the most like well written like easy to read book for me it wasn't problematic I didn't have problems with the way that he wrote any of the characters or anything it was just it was literally just that this was more of a mystery book and felt less of a thrill for me to read and I'm not super into this type of mystery to me it didn't really feel like that intense maybe it was just that I didn't care about the characters that much or the storyline the plot um, I don't know but this one just didn't work for me. Um, I think, I think a lot of other people really love it. So don't listen to me, but <laughs> I DNF'd it. Sister Maiden Monster. This was a reread for me and I freaking love this book. I think on my first read, I gave it a 4.5. Reread, I gave it a five star. It ended up making my top 10 of the year. If you go over onto my Instagram, I didn't do a top 10 on YouTube. I wish I would have. It's too late for me to do one now. Um, but I did do a top 10 list over on Instagram. I will link my Instagram in my link tree. It's always linked there. Um, but I love this book. I thought it was so freaking fun. It's a very much my vibe, what I like and like horror fantasy. It's very like cosmic-y, which is not a spoiler for this at all. It's on the very front cover. It's blurbed that it's cosmic. It's cosmic all throughout. It's a post-COVID story, but COVID isn't mentioned a whole lot, but they are experiencing like this surge of a totally, totally different um, sort of pandemic situation that's happening, post-apocalyptic situation, post-COVID. And it's just a wild time. We're following three different characters. They all have very different personalities. One's quite unhinged, and um, but they all have really fascinating stories. I thought they all kind of enter twine towards the end and I just thought it was a super fun book. Technically not perfect because I the ending I do feel like I really want I need a book too. After that ending I really really need and want a book too and I don't know that one is ever going to be in the works. I don't know that the author is planning on making this a series by any means. That could have just been the end finale um, but I really really hope we get a book too for this. And even though that ending, I was like, ah, I need more with that ending. Um, 
it was still perfection for me. I still, <laughs> I loved it so, so much. There's a lot of stuff going on in this book. There's um, a lot of sci-fi elements and fantasy elements and horror elements. And um, there's just, there's a lot to this book. There's a lot going on. It's, to me, felt very fast paced. It's very gory, very, very gross, feels very intense at times. Um, it's a lot. It's a lot. But man, it was so fun. I just had an absolute blast. Uh, Thornhenge by T. King Fisher. Oh my god, guys, I am back on the T. King Fisher bandwagon. After A House with Good Bones, I DNF that one sometime last year. I just, I got really frustrated at it for whatever reason. And I was like, you know what? I'm not reading any more of her horror books, but <sighs> she just has such a huge backlist. And I do like, there's something about her writing style that I really like. And I have rated two of her books really highly. So I decided to try out one of her fantasy books, see what I thought before I like called it quits with her. It really wasn't that big of a deal with A House with Good Bones. I just got frustrated because I feel like her horror books kind of follow the sim a similar sort of setup each time. And I was like, do something new. But this, like I'm back on the T. King Fisher train. I loved this book. I gave it 4.5 stars. I think I rounded up to five on Goodreads. Maybe I didn't. I'm not sure, but it's a solid 4.5. I really had a great time. This is a Sleeping Beauty retelling. I read this for Folklore February, which is Kat from Cast Novel Adventures, her um, readathon that she had in February. It's a Sleeping Beauty retelling, but it's told from the perspective of not Sleeping Beauty. It's told from the perspective of someone who is like overseeing the castle and kind of watching it and trying to prevent people from waking up Sleeping Beauty. And then throughout the story, we find out why, um, how Sleeping Beauty got stuck in the castle, why um, this character is protecting the castle and trying to keep it, keep her asleep. And then this prince comes along to come and like kind of rescue Sleeping Beauty. I wouldn't say that this is a romance by any means. It does kind of have that vibe a little, but nothing ever like romantic ever happens. So don't go into this expecting romance, fantasy, fantasy, romance, whatever. Um, this is definitely just like fantasy. It has its dark moments, um, has like, you know, a couple little horror-ish elements, but it's definitely fantasy. I really loved the main character and I just thought it was all around a really great, really interesting take on Sleeping Beauty. I really enjoyed it. And um, I don't remember why I didn't give it five stars. I don't remember why I gave it 4.5. So I don't know. I... I don't know. I can't. I'm going to put it in pretty freaking great. I'm going to put it in pretty freaking great. Um, because it was. It was pretty freaking great. I don't remember why I didn't rate it five stars, but I don't know. There was some, there must have been something about it that I wanted changed. But the stuff I love about it just overwhelms my memory. And that's all I can remember. I can't remember what I didn't like. But it was pretty freaking great. It was close to perfection. Absolutely loved it. If you like fantasy retellings, like fairy tale retellings, you'll probably like this one as long as you don't mind like a little bit of horror in it. Next up, we have Strega. This was another one of Katrina's book club books. This was her book club book for March. I read it in February. This was marketed to me as like a horror with like witchy elements. I did not get that from this. To me, it was like lit fic with very, 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 very slight magical elements, um, like witchy vibes. The witchy vibes were there, but they were just so mild and so much like in the the background that I wouldn't call this a witch story. I wouldn't call this a horror story by any means. I would call it maybe like a mystery. Um, but definitely read more like lit fic to me. Very beautiful prose. I really loved the writing. Um, but yeah, the plot line, the story, read kind of boring for me. It read very slow. Didn't really meet my expectations. So I was quite disappointed by it. And um, yeah, so I'm going to put this one and it was okay. Might recommend. 
Next up, we have Penny Moons, Creepers Landia. This is Wally's Christmas Revenge. This was another Christmas book that I read in December. I did not like this one. I gave it two stars, I want to say, two, 2.5, maybe three. I didn't really care for this one. I liked it in the beginning. We're following this vampire. Looks very much like um, he's supposed to look here on the cover. He loves Christmas, loves decorating for Christmas, kind of has this like a battle with the people in the neighborhood. Not really a battle, like they're not battling with him, but he's always trying to like be, have the best decorations and just be the best on the block, you know? But this Christmas is not going as planned. Um, he's feeling like other people are upping his decorations. He's um, having issues in stores and he's just not having a good Christmas. He's getting very, very frustrated increasingly throughout the book. And then it starts getting into the horror elements as he starts getting angrier and angrier. I liked it in the beginning, kind of, sort of, but it's written in a way that it's not really horrifying. It's kind of funny. But I don't know, there was just something about it that just wasn't working for me. I feel like in theory, this would be like a really good Christmas book because it's not too, too dark. Um, I don't even remember the end, but I'm pretty sure that I finished this one, right? <laughs> I think I rated it. So um, I don't know. I, even though I gave it like in the two stars, I, I would say that I think for like a particular audience, um, would enjoy this. So I would recommend it in certain circumstances. Um, but yeah, it just didn't work for me. It just didn't work for me. Um, A Cold Place for Dying by Christopher Triana. I read this in December with my winter horror reads. I think I read it in December. Um, I buddy read this with Christine from Secrets Read. Uh, I ended up giving this one a 3, 3.5. I had a blast with this one. I did end up only giving it in the three star range though, because it went some places that were super underwhelming and um, predictable in a way that I was like, please don't let it be this, please don't let it be this, please don't let it be this. And then it was that and I was like, no. <laughs> um, yeah, so it was a really fun time for most of it, but yeah, I couldn't justify giving it a four star when the ending just really pissed me off so much. So I'm going to put in, it was okay, might recommend. If the ending would have been different, um, it would have been pretty freaking great. But whatevs, it is what it is. Um, in that one, we are following this guy who goes out into the forest to do some hunting over Christmas Eve because he's like, experienced this bad uh, divorce or breakup and he's just wanting to like recapture his manliness and go out there and shoot some things in the woods even though he's never done that before and instead of being able to do that he quickly comes upon this woman who's running through the woods uh, naked or near naked and she's saying that she's being chased by this serial killer or someone who's kept her kidnapped in their cabin or whatever and then he meets them and they say that she's crazy and um, that's actually his wife and then it becomes like this who's telling the truth who's lying are they both lying is either one of them telling the truth what's actually happening here um, is my life in danger is one of their lives in danger like what's going on um, and I really liked the psychologicalness of that but just where it ended up going was really underwhelming. Cackle by Rachel Harrison. This book, perfection. Absolute perfection for me. Favorite book of the year so far. My only five-star read of 2024. Like strong, strong five-star. I'm so excited to read more from Rachel Harrison. I just, I, I want to read all of her books this year. She only has a couple other ones that I need to read. I just, I love her writing style. I think she writes characters so, so good. Um, she writes some really good gross moments, but I don't think that this is like horror horror. I definitely think it's more of like a contemporary fantasy ish book, but it does have those horror elements. It does have some really good gross moments and some weird uh, things to the story. Um, enough to kind of like satiate my horror love. I think they were good enough and um, put in like just the right moments to really make my jaw drop. And I'll prefer that any day to just like constant 
horror bombardment in my face. I feel like that just isn't my cup of tea when it comes to horror. I feel like bombardment of gore just it loses its impact for me. I like this kind of subtle horror where it just has like a couple really good impactful moments and this one really worked for me. Um, I loved the witchy story. I love witch stories and I think this one was very uh, my vibe. We're following this woman who's in this uh, experiencing this really bad breakup or she was in this relationship for like a decade. She's now trying to find herself who she is outside of this relationship on her own, what she wants with the rest of her life. I just love this kind of story where we have this woman, you know, coming into her power, coming into her own, figuring out what she wants in her life outside of partnership, finding love and joy outside of partners, like within herself. I just love those kind of stories. Had some really fun elements to it that I, I just absolutely loved. I think the cover for this like suits the book really, really well. There's spiders, there's lots of tea, lots of tea drinking and um yeah it was just so freaking fun and fantastic absolutely loved it five stars i'll be screaming about it from the rooftops all year long i'm definitely late to the bandwagon this came out a couple years ago i think but um yeah i'm so happy that i picked it up and another five star hit from rachel harrison razor blade tears i dnf this one this just wasn't for me i didn't even get very far into it before i knew that this just wasn't this wasn't going to be for me um i really didn't like the the two main characters that we're following we're following these two dads who um their sons were in a relationship with each other they were murdered and then these fathers are trying to uh, figure out what exactly happened to their sons who killed them and enact revenge and i just i really didn't like the dads i feel like their reasoning at least in the beginning for like going after their killers and just how they handle things throughout the first portion of the book. I just didn't care. I didn't like them. I'll probably check out other books from S.A. Cosby because this is the only one that I've read. But um, if there are anything like this, you guys can let me know if you've read like a lot of his works. If he writes typically in this fashion, I'll probably just stick, stay away from his books because it's just not my vibe. Next up was Goblin by Josh Mallerman. This was like a mood read. I just picked it up for, I don't even know what reason I just grabbed it. Um, I really am obsessed with this cover. I love it so, so much. And I really, really wanted to love this book so that I could buy the hardcover and have this stunning hardcover on my shelves, which... I still might one day. If I can find it for like super cheap, I'd probably pick it up just for the cover. The artwork alone is stunning. I don't know why I love it so much, but I just friggin' love it. The book itself is a collection of six novellas. Um, it is listed as a novel though, not a short story collection, which I don't understand because at least at the point that I got to, I read four out of the six novellas. And even though they take place, I guess, in the same town, I couldn't really figure out the link between all of them. So... I don't know. I ended up DNFing it. And by story four, I just, I couldn't find myself interested in picking it up again. I was like 70% in. I probably should have just finished it, but I just couldn't bring myself to pick it up again. I just couldn't. So um, I couldn't even tell you what the stories were about. The first one was like a, a delivery driver. I think that was the first story. Yeah. A delivery driver. He's told to not like mess with the package in the back. And um, he ends up kind of like sneaking a peek, but it doesn't really do too much to it. And then he gets to his destination. And then the other stories are like different things that are happening in that town. After the first story, the first story I really liked, I think I gave it like four stars because I do rate stories individually, but they just kind of decreased from there. And by the fourth story, I was like, man, I don't want to read this anymore which is kind of a bummer because I do really like Josh Mellerman's like full length stories for the most part, but it seems like the stuff that I pick up from him, either I really, really love it or I DNF it. It's There's nothing in between. It's either a four or five star or it's a DNF. Um, I don't know what it is. I still will be reading more from Josh Mellerman, but this particular one just didn't work for me. Um, over my birthday, February uh, 28th, so over the end of February and over the first week of March, I read Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. I loved this one. I've never seen the movies, but I was familiar with the story. I was familiar with a lot of the plot points with this family that moves to this house on a very busy road. Traumatic event happens with the family. There's a pet cemetery very close by to the property. 
the pet cemetery is used and things kind of spiral from there. I thought the story was really, really great. Um, I loved the audiobook narration. I was super invested in the story, even though I was already familiar with like some of the things that were going to happen. I wasn't familiar with the ending. So that was a fun surprise. Um, but I really still enjoyed the book a lot. I really enjoyed my time listening to it. And um, it's probably one of my favorite Stephen King that I've read so far. I've only read a few, but this one's definitely at the top of my list so far. 4.5 stars. I wouldn't say it's perfection. I do think there are, were parts of it that dragged, but the story itself, I don't have any uh, problems with. There was nothing I would really change, um, but for some reason it did read a little bit slow in sections for me. So um, not a full perfection, but pretty freaking great. Pretty freaking great. The Patient by Jasper DeWitt. This is a very, very short thriller. I thought it was just going to be about like this psychiatrist trying to um, like help cure someone in a mental institution or maybe not cure, but like find out why they're there. They're like um, a lot of people have worked with them and they're supposed to be like super unhinged and crazy. And um, this psychiatrist comes in to try and get to the root of the problem or try and help this person. This ended up going in a direction that totally took me off guard in the best sort of way. I thought it was super, super fun, super surprising. I really had a blast with this. It was a very, very quick read. It's a super short audiobook. Um, I liked the writing. I thought it was super easy to get into. Yeah, I really just I had a great time. I don't remember what I rated it. I think I gave it 4.5. Um, I know I did, definitely didn't give it a five star because I only had one five star throughout January, February, March so far. Um, so I think it was a 4.5, maybe a four, but it's pretty freaking great, man. I really had a blast with this probably because I didn't really know what to expect going in. I don't really hear too many people talking about this one. Um, I don't think it's super new, but I don't think it's super old either. I don't remember when it was released. But anyway, if you're looking for a super fast thriller, this is a short one. I thought it was really good. Jawbone by Monica Ojeda. I read this in December and this ended up making my top 10 list. I don't remember where. Um, because I read it in December, I probably didn't put it too high. I think it was somewhere between the eight and 10 range um, because I had just read it and I wasn't sure how, you know, how much it was actually going to stick with me. I wanted to sit with it for a little bit longer and I just ran out of time. Um, but I, I think this book is perfection. I think the writing in it is so phenomenal. Um, I think it is a translated work, but between the like actual author's writing and the translation, if I'm correct in it being a translation, I think it was just phenomenal. I thought the characters were done so, so well. It's a very tense story, very, very dark. Following this group of girls in this like a uh, very private sort of uh, like rich parents, private school sort of deal. Um, I think it's like a Catholic school, maybe. So we're following this group of girls, this group of friends, specifically, two girls from that group, Fernanda and Annalise, they're like the main ones that we follow. And then we follow uh, one of the teachers that is teaching them. She's new to the school. She worked at a different school prior and had some kind of trauma experience there, which we find out what that is. And she's now teaching at this new school, but she's kind of a wreck. She's an emotional wreck. She has a lot of baggage now from this experience at her last school. And these students, they have a lot of um, things going on in their mind and emotionally. And when these characters kind of collide, it becomes this really dark, intense story. And I just thought it was so, so fantastic. I just, I love the book. I love the writing. I thought the characters were so dark and complex and interesting. I don't have any complaints about this book whatsoever in the storytelling or anything about it. So absolutely going into the perfection slot. McLew by Otessa Moshvig. Otessa Moshvig is one of my favorite, favorite authors. That's not to say every single book that I read of her is a, of hers is a five star. This one was not. Um, I ended up giving it three stars. It, I think it was like an early novella that she wrote, maybe her first. Um, it's a very dark, uncomfortable 
Reed, the main character in this, is very, very unlikable, in my opinion. I don't know who would like this guy. I love Otessa's ability to get you to care about really awful people. And even though I found him so uncomfortable to be in his mind, we are following the book through his perspective. Um, it was it was very unsettling and uncomfortable to be in his world and experiencing the things that he was experiencing um, through their lens. And it was only like a hundred and something page book, very, very short novella. And it still took me <laughs> quite a quite a bit of time because I had to keep putting it down because it just felt so gross to be in this world. It's really, really disgusting and not in like a super gory way, but just the setting and the character himself is just, it's gross. It just made me feel disgusting. And I feel like that takes talent. That takes talent, like writing talent in order to give me like such a visceral reaction. Um, so I don't want to say that this was a bad book by any means. I don't know who I would recommend this to, um, but I did give it a three star. Um, and I think it's a, I think it's a decent representation of Otessa Moshvig's writing style and her ability to write really awful characters, but still have like a, um, something that you just can't put down, like you're so uncomfortable, which may make some people like put that down. Um, but I like being uncomfortable a little bit in my books. And I don't know, I'm going to put it in, it was okay, my recommend. I would probably recommend this to like a very, very niche audience. Um, if you really enjoy like horrible, horrible characters and love being disturbed and feeling absolutely gross and uncomfortable, then give this one a go. It does have racism in it. It takes place in the 1800s. So although I don't think like it's super accurate with some of like the slang terms and stuff used, um, it gets the point across. Again, I gave it three stars. So it was okay. It was okay. Might recommend to small, small amount of people. Definitely not my favorite, Otessa Moshvig, and I would not recommend you start here. Um, I think she has much, much better books, more accessible books, but um, I'm happy I got to it, and I'll definitely still be reading more from her because I just, I think she's great. Um, the Telltale Heart and Other Stories by Edgar Allan Poe. I didn't read this whole collection. I just read a couple stories. Um, I read The Telltale Heart and The Black Cat, and um, I really enjoyed the both. I didn't uh, rate them. I don't rate classics like this. And because I didn't read the whole collection, I just read stories. I didn't feel right to rate them, but I did really enjoy them. And I haven't read a lot from Poe and I definitely am excited to read more. I'm not rushing out to read his stuff, but I'll be excited to read more when um, Cats Readathon comes back around. And um, yeah, I really enjoyed them. So I'm going to put... Um, I'm gonna put pretty freaking great. I wouldn't call them perfect, um, but yeah, pretty freaking great. I really enjoyed them. The Changeling by Victor Laval. I DNF this one. I hear this one uh, raved about. Um, I think it won awards, so don't listen to me. I feel like this one is usually talked about as his best or when people are recommending his books, a lot of people would say this one. Um, it didn't work for me. I just thought the pacing was a little bit wonky for my taste, a bit slow, and um, I couldn't really get invested in the story. And yeah, I think it was mostly a pacing issue. Like, I just wanted more to happen, and I got pretty far in, and still nothing was happening. I feel like I DNF'd at a point where things might have happened, but I had experienced that prior where I thought I was at a point where things were going to start happening and it got even slower. <laughs> so I just DNF'd it. I was like, you know what? This one's just not for me. Um, I've rated, I've read two other things from him in the past. I gave one four stars, which was like a short novella and I gave Lone Women three stars. Just wasn't for me. Um, so I don't know. Maybe I'll read more from him in the future. Um, maybe it, I just like his novellas. I'm not sure at this point, but this one just didn't work for me. You Should Have Left by Daniel Kelman. I read this in December and it did make my top 10. I really enjoyed this one. This was a reread that I had read um, for the first time a little bit earlier in the year. I wanted to reread it just to make sure 
that I really loved it. And I did. And I think it's a fantastic book. It's a short novella. So if you're looking for something short, I think it's really fun. But like the way that it's written, we're following the main character is a writer and he's writing a novel while also like going to this place with his family and these weird things are happening, but he's also like trying to write this novel. And the way that the story is written, like those elements sort of like mix up. So like he'll be thinking about a scene in his book and then like his wife or his uh, kid will be like talking to him at the same time. So like those things are like happening simultaneously, like these worlds are colliding. So when if you're listening to the audio, it can get kind of messy if you're really not paying close attention to what's actually happening and what's what he's writing or thinking about like the story progression of the book that he's writing. So it was nice to have the story for me to see with my eyeballs, because you can actually see like the the breaks of when he's thinking about stuff and when he's interacting with his family and the differences there. Um, so I think it's easier to consume the story if you're reading with your eyeballs. But um, yeah, I really enjoyed the story. I thought it was super weird, super fun. This is also a translated work. So if you're wanting to expand your translated fiction, I think this is a fun one. I gave it five stars. Would I put it in perfection? Um, I don't really have any complaints about it. I don't think there's anything in it that I would change. I think it's the perfect length for the type of story it is. I'm going to put it in perfection. Carmilla by J. Sheridan Lefanu. This was one of the classics that I read. I read this in February for the Gothic Hearts readathon and I really liked it. I didn't meet my expectations totally. I did think this was gonna be of more of like a sapphic romance between Carmilla and our main character, Julie, Julia, Julia, I think. But halfway through the story, it kind of shifts focus from this relationship between these two women. And it focuses more on this doctor that's trying to uh, diagnose Julia because she's having these health issues and then he starts thinking that Carmilla is a vampire and trying to um, prove that she is and that part of the story I was like no I don't really care about you doctor dude like I don't I don't want to know that I didn't want that I just wanted the sapphic romance part and the vampire part and um, not so much with the with the doctor stuff so didn't super love this one, but I am happy that I finally read it. And um, yeah, I'm going to put in, it was okay. Might recommend. I would definitely recommend it if you haven't read Carmilla. It's just a good quick read and, um, you know, like one of those foundational vampire books that it's good to have just knowledge of. So I would definitely still recommend it, but wasn't a favorite by any means. Alice by Christina Henry. I read this for my book club, Dark Hearts Book Club in February. This is the Alice in Wonderland retelling. This is very, very dark, very, very dark retelling. Alice is um, starts the book in a mental ward. She can't really remember why she's there. Um, she just has like all of these deep, intense feelings. Her neighbor, person knows her is familiar with her there's this event that happens at the sanitarium and um they end up breaking out and she goes on this adventure with this other person to figure out what happened to her why she's there and you know just what what's going on and um there's a lot of like crime stuff involved definitely check content warnings if you have um, sensitivities to things. There's a lot of dark stuff that goes on in this with um, like sexual trafficking and stuff like that. I thought the uh, plot was very interesting. I just don't think I absolutely loved the execution of the story. I think um, like some of the fantasy elements, even though I really loved some other parts just didn't really work for me. The ending was kind of lackluster for me. Um, so it ended up being more of like a 3.5 star read. I did really enjoy it though. And I think like maybe in reading the rest of the series, maybe I could go back and enjoy this one more. It might be that sort of series. I'm not quite sure, but I do want to check out book two and see if that's something, if, see if the series is something that I want to continue. I'm going to put, it was okay, might recommend. I do think it's more on like the higher three star range for me though. 
Um, it's just, just almost pretty freaking great. Um, it was pretty freaking good, not pretty freaking great. Um, another Stephen King that I read, this one I read in December, was The Shining, and I did really enjoy this one. I was super familiar with the plot line, even though the book does read very different than the movie. I had seen the movie uh, multiple times. Really not my favorite sort of story, but I did want to check out the book, and um, the book ended up being just a four star for me. Still pretty freaking great. I'm going to put it in pretty freaking great. Um, I, I think I actually prefer the the a book plot to the movie plot. I thought it was um, a bit scarier for me personally. I don't really like the movie, um, the movie with Jack Nicholson. I know probably unpopular opinion, but I haven't seen any other versions of The Shining. That's the only one. Um, I don't know. It just never really, never really bugged me out. But I, I do like that type of setting. Um, I think the dynamics between, like the relationship between the family and the book, I liked a lot more. Some of the stuff that happens in the book, I liked a lot more. I liked the ending a lot more. It was a fun read. Um, again, not perfect. It was a bit slow in sections. And, um, you know, Stephen King, he likes to give every single character in his books like this big long backstory and like I just didn't feel like it was needed for some of this stuff but <clears throat> overall pretty freaking great I really enjoyed it and yeah it's going in that slot this is taking a long time my voice is really starting to hurt I don't talk this much typically <laughs> okay um where am I at Dark Mountain by Richard Lehman what what <laughs> what why how was this book <laughs> what, why, how? um i think when i originally rated this book i gave it a three star i have since changed my story graph rating to a 2.5 i just don't see any circumstance in which i would recommend this book <laughs> um in it we are following this group of people who go camping and um in on the campgrounds there is a witch with uh two of her cohorts uh, living with her out there on the lands and um, one of them at least is absolutely absolutely vile there's some questionable content in this the writing is not good in my opinion I just I don't <laughs> I don't understand I don't understand why this book <laughs> exists I don't know like I wasn't expecting a whole lot going into this Kelsey gave me plenty plenty of warnings I read this for um, the start of her like year of layman project that she's doing I am not continuing I read this one and I'm done um, I, I might pick up maybe one other throughout the year but honestly I'm not confident that I will just like the further we get into the year I just don't I don't think I'm not confident that I will like anything that he puts out even like the best Richard Lehman book I don't think is going to be my cup of tea it's just not for me I just don't like the way that he writes people I don't like the way that he writes guys or women or anybody I don't like his writing style um I'm just I'm just not into it I'm not into it so it's going in the what why how if it wasn't for me just wanting to experience a Richard Lehman for the first time in completion I probably would have DNF'd it and um yeah his stuff is just it's not for me let the Right One In by John Avide Linkvitz. I read this in December. This is another vampire story. It takes it actually takes place during fall, but it takes place in Sweden where it's super cold and super snowy. So essentially it feels like winter to everyone else in the world. So it feels like a winter book, but it definitely takes place over the span of like, I think October, October, November, I think. I really love this book. I gave it a four, 4.5. I can't really remember. It's not perfection. It's not going in perfection, but I'm putting it in pretty freaking great. It's very dark and uncomfortable to read. It's another one of those books that it just feels gross as you're reading to consume it. Like the characters in it are just so nasty. Um, not everyone, but it just, it gave such a strong feeling of grossness like I feel like I could accurately feel the atmosphere to this book which I think is great writing um 
I feel like I could smell all the smells of this world and it just smelled like blood and urine. And if that gives you any kind of indication of just like how gross this book made me feel, there is content warnings for like pedophilia and stuff like that. Um, I feel like if you've watched the movies, they're different from the book. The book has a completely different vibe. I feel like the movies kind of focus on the connection between these two kids. And while that is a big part of the story, the books really kind of focus a lot on the adults in this world as well. Like everyone that they meet, we get to meet all of these people who live in this town. And in doing that, um, it really, for me, even though it read kind of slow that way, it was kind of Stephen King-esque and that he gave like backstories to every single character that you meet. And was that necessary? Probably not. And the movies definitely cut all of that out. But in cutting all that out, it really left out like who this town was made of and who all these people were and who like the main caretaker was. And, um, and all of that, it just, the world was just so, so dark and nasty. The end of the book goes really, really wild. I, again, I did have some problems with the storytelling overall. I think like the vampire lore in it, like kind of went a little wonky for me. And it was definitely like a very uncomfortable, unsettling read throughout, very slow paced. And I, it's definitely not gonna be for everyone, but I just have such an appreciation for like authors that can make me feel so disgusting but at the same time like not in a way that I want to put the story down like I want to figure out what's going on with the story and I want to see where it goes and that's how I felt about this one. I did read this as a group with like some of Kelsey's patrons over December um, and I know a lot of people kind of dropped out of it so Uncomfort being uncomfortable, feeling this gross, being around these type of characters, definitely not going to be for everyone. But if you like really dark, disturbing horror like that, really uncomfortable situations and being in uncomfortable, dark, gross settings like that, you might really like this one. I think it was really well written and really well told overall. And yeah, it's pretty freaking great. It will definitely live rent free in my mind for years and years to come. I don't think I will ever forget this book. Um, so there's that. And what do I have left? Three books left, uh, or four books left. Uh, Grim Memorials by R. Patrick Gates. This was one that I completed in the first week of March, but um, it was a February TBR, so I'm counting it for my winter reads. Um, I read it for Folklore February um, for Cats Readathon. Uh, her and Kelsey had a uh, live discussion about this book. It was also Kelsey's book club book for February. This one was okay. It's very intense, very gross, very <laughs> splatterpunk extreme horror-esque. It's a lot of very imaginative gore in this, which I'm not against. I, I really actually, <laughs> I thought a lot of the scenes were pretty wild and I was like, at the end of them, I was like, wow, he went there. He, he went there. That was a choice. That was, that was a choice. Um, but that type of horror just isn't, it's not my favorite, like just being bombarded with gore and like these really nasty sex scenes and just having like this really vile witch just do all of the most <laughs> gross things. It just, it didn't, it didn't do anything for me. It was a very long book too, in the high 400, close to 500 range. And I just didn't think this type of story needed to be that long. The characters and the plot and everything for 500 pages, like it just didn't justify that for me. And it was just, it was too over the top, too much, too long, just too much of everything. So um, I'm going to put it was okay, might recommend. I think I gave it a three star. I'll leave it at that. Um, I would recommend it to a certain type of reader if you really like splatterpunk and just really want something gore heavy and gross and wild and nasty. Pick this one up. I'm, I'm sure you won't just dis be disappointed. But yeah, just it just wasn't it wasn't an Amy book. It was not it was not for me. Um, Maynard's House by Herman Rocher. 
This is another book that I read for Kelsey's book club. I read this one in January. This is one that I really, really loved. Uh, we're following this guy who was in war with his friend Maynard. Um, Maynard has now passed and left his property to his friend. I don't remember his name, but um, he goes out to the property and stays there and some stuff happens and um, I wasn't expecting it to go where it went. I thought it was pretty interesting and I really loved the writing style, the storytelling. I thought it had some humor in it that really made this uh, the most enjoyable for me. I think without that humor element, it might have read maybe a little bit dry. But I really liked the story. I liked the main character, despite his flaws, kind of, um, you know, gave me icky vibes at certain points throughout the book. But overall, I still really liked him enough to like want to keep reading and um, was invested in his story and was very curious about what was happening on this property. And I really enjoyed it. I thought the audiobook was done really well. And yeah, I loved it. So I'm going to put it, I gave it a 4.5 star. I think I, I think I rounded up to five on Goodreads. I can't remember. Um, but it's a solid 4.5. Um, not perfect, but it was pretty freaking great. It was pretty freaking great. I did. I, I really, really enjoyed this one. Uh, the Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. This is another classic that I read. Very short story. One that I think a lot of people are familiar with. We're following this woman who um, is experiencing some like mental strain. Her husband puts her in this room with this like weird yellow wallpaper. And um, despite her exclamations of like, you know, I don't think it's healthy for me to be in this room. I think it'd be better if I go out and, you know, touch grass and talk to my friends and stuff. And he's like, no, you just need to rest, stay in your room and you'll eventually feel better. And then you can come out. <laughs> and it doesn't really go that way. Um, it's a very short, quick read. I think I would have enjoyed it more had it been like a little bit longer and like there been like a you know, a slower progression into her experience in this room. Um, but I did really enjoy the story. I think it's a, an important story to tell and was probably very important at the time. And um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I'm going to put it in pretty freaking great. And then last but not least, we're ending on a Goosebumps. Um, I read Say Cheese and Die. I don't remember what I read this for, but, um, you know, I'm making my way through the classic Goosebumps books. And this is one that I listen to on audio. Um, I enjoyed this one. It's about a kid who finds a camera. And when he takes a picture of people, um, something bad happens to them. So is it the camera? Is it a coincidence? I'll have to read the book to find out. But um, I thought this was a fun one. Not my favorite, favorite Goosebumps, but pretty freaking great. I would say it's definitely amongst the top ones. It didn't piss me off. So <laughs> that's a good, good sign. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I mean, it's a Goosebumps. It's a middle grade, quick read. It's a good time. I enjoyed it. All right, that is it. Oh my God, this took so long to film. This is going to be a beast to edit. But thank you so much for watching. Hopefully I cut this down to a more reasonable time. <laughs> I talk too much. I talk too much. My throat hurts. Um, but yeah, so that was my wrap up for winter. All of the books that I read throughout the season, I will do another one of these in the summer, at the beginning of summer for spring. And um, yeah, let me know in the comments what you thought of this. I don't typically do tier ranking, but this was fun. I enjoyed it. And uh, next time around, I'm just going to have to cut it down with how much talking I'm doing because my voice hurts. I don't usually talk this much. Okay. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I will have everything that I mentioned listed or linked down in the description. If you want to follow me elsewhere, Goodreads, Storygraph, Instagram, always linked down in my link tree down below. Um, thank you again for watching, and I will see you in my next video.